Hello again, Social Studies class. Uh, so we're going to continue today uh, reading about the March to the Allied victory during World War II. Um, we're going to talk about some um, very famous battles in both Europe and in the Pacific campaign. Uh, so we're going to start with the victory in Europe. While the Allies were dealing with issues on the home front, they were also preparing to push toward victory in Europe. In 1943... The Allies began secretly building an invasion force in Great Britain. Their plan was to launch an attack on German-held France across the English Channel, the D-Day invasion. By May of 1944, the invasion force was ready. Thousands of planes, ships, tanks, and landing craft and more, and three million troops awaited the order to attack. General Dwight D. Eisenhower, the commander of this enormous force, planned to strike on the coast of Normandy in northwestern France. The Germans knew that an attack was coming, but they did not know where it would be launched. To keep Hitler guessing, the Allies set up a huge dummy army with its own headquarters and equipment. This make-believe army appeared to be preparing to attack the French seaport of Calais. Right, let's take a look at this uh, little mini-map here about the D-Day invasion. Uh, so this was on June 6th of 1944. Um, it was designed as a battle to liberate France. If you remember from earlier in the chapter, a couple weeks ago, uh, France in World War II was overwhelmed very quickly by the Nazis, and they surrendered um, even before the United States got into the war. Well, the British and the United States, um, as allied forces, uh, wanted to certainly uh, liberate and um, free the uh, French people of German control because they were their allies. Uh, so this was what this D-Day invasion was designed to do. So this map is really, um, you can kind of see here, is focusing just on uh, one part of the northern part of France. So they're French beaches. Um, and you can see Omaha Beach, Gold Beach, Juno Beach, and Sword Beach. Those were like code names given by the British and the U.S. Army. Okay. Um, you can also see like what the direction that it came from. So this was an air and naval uh, attack onto the very heavily fortified, very heavily defended uh, northern France. So it was the Germans that were holding France at the time. They were defending it, and it was the Allies that were storming the beaches of northern France. Codenamed Operation Overlord, the invasion of Normandy was the largest land and sea attack in history. The invasion began on June 6, 1944, known as D-Day. At dawn on that day, British, American, French, and Canadian troops fought their way onto a 60-mile stretch of beach in Normandy. The Germans had dug in with machine guns, rocket launchers, and cannons. They sheltered behind concrete walls three feet thick. Not surprisingly, the Allies took heavy casualties. Among the American forces alone, more than 2,700 men died on the beaches that day. Despite heavy losses, the Allies held the beachheads. Within a month of D-Day, more than one million additional troops had landed. Then... On July 25th, the Allies punched a hole in the German defenses near San Lo. And the United States Third Army, led by General George Patton, broke out. A month later, the Allies marched triumphantly into Paris. By September, they had liberated France, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Then they set their sights on Germany. The Battle of the Bulge. As Allied forces moved toward Germany from the west, the Soviet army was advancing toward Germany from the east. Hitler now faced a war on two fronts. In a desperate gamble, he decided to counterattack in the west. Hitler hoped a victory would split American and British forces and break up Allied supply lines. Explaining the reasoning behind his plan, Hitler said, This battle is to decide whether we shall live or die. All resistance must be broken in a wave of terror. On December 16th, German tanks broke through weak American defenses along a 75-mile front in the Ardennes. The push into Allied lines gave the campaign its name, the Battle of the Bulge. 
Although caught off guard, the Allies eventually pushed the Germans back. The Germans had little choice but to retreat, since there were no reinforcements available. All right, let's go ahead and read about Dwight D. Eisenhower, a U.S. commander. In his career, U.S. General Dwight Eisenhower had shown an uncommon ability to work with all kinds of people, even competitive allies. His chief of staff said of Eisenhower, The sun rises and sets on him for me. He was also wildly popular with his troops, who affectionately called him Uncle Ike. So it was not a surprise when, in December of 1943, U.S. Army Chief of Staff George Marshall named Eisenhower as Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces in Europe. The new commander's people skills enabled him to join American and British forces together to put a permanent end to Nazi aggression. Germany's Unconditional Surrender After the Battle of the Bulge, the war in Europe rapidly drew to a close. In late March of 1945, the Allies rolled across the Rhine River into Germany. By the middle of April, a noose was closing around Berlin. About three million Allied soldiers approached Berlin from the southwest. Another six million Soviet troops approached from the east. By April 25th of 1945, the Soviets had surrounded the capital and were pounding the city with artillery fire. While Soviet shells burst over Berlin, Hitler prepared for his end in an underground headquarters beneath this crumbling city. On April 29th, he married his longtime companion, Eva Braun. The next day, Hitler and Eva Braun committed suicide. Their bodies were then carried out and burned. On May 7, 1945, General Eisenhower accepted the unconditional surrender of the Third Reich from the German military. President Roosevelt, however, did not live to witness the long-awaited victory. He died suddenly on April 12th as Allied armies were advancing toward Berlin. Roosevelt's successor, Harry Truman, received the news of the Nazi surrender. On May 9th, the surrender was officially signed in Berlin. The United States and other Allied powers celebrated VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. After nearly six years of fighting, the war in Europe had ended. Victory in the Pacific. Although the war in Europe was over, the Allies were still fighting the Japanese in the Pacific. With the Allied victory at Guadalcanal, however, the Japanese advances in the Pacific had been stopped. For the rest of the war, the Japanese retreated before the counterattack of the Allied powers. The Japanese in retreat. By the fall of 1944, the Allies were moving in on Japan. In October, Allied forces landed on the Isle of Leyte in the Philippines. General Douglas MacArthur, who had been ordered to leave the islands before the surrender in 19, May of 1942, waded ashore at Leyte with his troops. On reaching the beach, he declared, People of the Philippines, I have returned. Actually, the takeover would not be quite that easy. The Japanese had devised a bold plan to halt the Allied advance. They would destroy the American fleet, thus preventing the Allies from resupplying their ground troops. This plan, however, required risking almost the entire Japanese fleet. They took this gamble on October 23rd in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Within four days, the Japanese Navy had lost disastrously, eliminating it as a fighting force in the war. Now, only the Japanese army and the feared kamikaze stood between the Allies and Japan. The kamikazes were Japanese suicide pilots. They would sink Allied ships by crash-diving their bomb-filled planes into them. In March of 1945, after a month of bitter fighting and heavy losses, American Marines took Iwo Jima, an island 760 miles from Tokyo. On April 1st, U.S. troops moved onto the island of Okinawa 
only about 350 miles from southern Japan. The Japanese put up a desperate fight. Nevertheless, on June 21st, one of the bloodiest land battles of the war ended. The Japanese lost over 100,000 troops and the Americans 12,000. And this picture here is um, at the Battle of Iwo Jima. You have U.S. Marines raising the flag at the top of the Iwo Jima Hill. Um, it was actually a staged picture uh, taken by a, a journalist. All right, we're going to read a little bit about the global impact of the atomic bomb, and then we're going to read about um, how that's used in the war. The atomic bomb. On the eve of World War II, scientists in Germany succeeded in splitting the nucleus of a uranium atom, releasing a huge amount of energy. Albert Einstein wrote to President Franklin Roosevelt and warned him that Nazi Germany might be working to develop atomic weapons. Roosevelt responded by giving his approval for an American program, later codenamed the Manhattan Project, to develop an atomic bomb. Roosevelt's decision set off a race to ensure that the United States would be the first to develop the bomb. On the morning of August 6, 1945, the B-29 bomber Enola Gay flown by Colonel Paul W. Tibbetts, Jr., took off from Tinian Island in the Mariana Islands. And at precisely 8.16 a.m., the atomic bomb exploded above Hiroshima, a city on the Japanese island of Honshu. Okay, we're going to skip that and just kind of look at the chart here. Okay, so um, it says Hiroshima Day of Fire, impact of the bombing. So temperatures on the ground when the bomb was off were 7,000 degrees, which is why everything um, within a certain radius of the bomb was basically just incinerated. Um, it caused hurricane force winds of 980 miles an hour, released 20,000 tons of TNT, destroyed 62,000 buildings, killed 70,000 people instantly. Um, and then by the end of the year, 140,000 people were dead, either from uh, wounds incurred or from radiation poisoning. And then the total deaths related to the atomic bomb were 210,000. The overwhelming destructive power of the Hiroshima bomb and the bomb dropped on Nagasaki three days later changed the nature of war forever. Nuclear destruction also led to questions about the ethics of scientists and politicians who chose to develop and use the bomb. The Japanese surrender. After Okinawa, the next stop for the Allies had to be Japan. President Truman's advisors had informed him that an invasion of the Japanese homeland might cost the Allies half a million lives. Truman had to make a decision whether to use a powerful new weapon called the atomic bomb or a bomb. Most of his advisors felt that using it would bring the war to the quickest possible end. The bomb had been developed by the top-secret Manhattan Project, headed by General Leslie Groves and Chief Scientist J. Robert Oppenheimer. Truman first learned of the new bomb's existence when he became president. The first atomic bomb was exploded in a desert in New Mexico on July 16, 1945. President Truman then warned the Japanese... He told them that unless they surrendered, they could expect a rain of ruin from the air. The Japanese did not reply. So on August 6, 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima, a Japanese city of nearly 350,000 people. <clears throat> Between 70,000 and 80,000 people died in the attack. Three days later, on August 9th, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki, a city of 270,000. More than 70,000 people were killed immediately. Radiation fallout from the two explosions killed many more. The Japanese finally surrendered to General Douglas MacArthur on September 2nd. The ceremony took place aboard the United States battleship Missouri in Tokyo Bay. With Japan's surrender, the war had ended. Now, countries faced the task of rebuilding a war-torn world. And then I'll leave you with the picture here. We've got Robert Oppenheimer... He's the one in the suit. And General Leslie Groves, he's the one in the military uniform, inspect the site of the first atomic bomb test near Alamogordo, New Mexico. So they tested the bombs in the United States before they dropped them on the two Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki.
Hope you guys have a good day, and I'll see you next time.